Welcome to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking for the high-level strategies and stories behind building a seven-figure product brand, then you're in the right place. On this show, we'll uncover the advanced strategies, stories, and secrets that you need to know in order to take your e-commerce brand to the next level. Are you ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million? Let's dive in. Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome back to Roadmap to One Million. My name is Stacey and I am your host and I am super excited for you to be here. If you are new here, welcome. Make sure that you are following the show because we have new episodes every Tuesday. If you are seasoned here, welcome back. Thanks so much for coming and checking out the podcast every week. We definitely appreciate if y'all make sure that you share this episode with some people that are in your circle that you know are definitely going to need this information because let me tell y'all today, We are talking operations, we are talking systems, and I am super excited to talk about this. And I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna go into why I'm super excited about this topic in a second after I introduce our fantastic guest. Um, But today our guest is Lanisha Thaddison. She is a system strategist and operations manager with over a decade of experience creating systems, workflows, and automations in the healthcare industry as a registered nurse. Um, She does, she helps coaches, consultants, strategists, and um, all different kinds of um, business owners streamline their processes, automations, and integrate systems and technology into their business. So I am super excited to welcome to Lanisha to the podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Yes. I'm super excited to talk about this because literally in the first quarter of every year, and I say this like it hasn't only been a couple of years, but Last year, I made the decision to really use the first quarter of the year to focus on creating systems and operations in our business and to really like figure out like, how do we streamline what we're doing? Um, And it has been so impactful in my business. (laughs) Like it's been super, super impactful to actually create SOPs. And we're gonna go into all this stuff, but like creating SOPs, creating systems for doing things. Not only does it help my brain to be able to process things, um, you know, a lot faster, but it helps me with my team to be able to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'm excited to talk talk about systems and operations today. But before we jump into that, let's talk about your background. Tell us a little bit about your journey from, going from a registered nurse to a system strategist extraordinaire. Yes, definitely a journey that is. Look. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I have been a registered nurse, like you said, for over 10 years. And in that position, I've done a little bit of everything. But what I, what was consistent in what I did was these leadership positions where sometimes it was a little bit chaotic, there was no systems and patient safety depended on it. The nurses safety depended on it. So we would create these teams so that we can streamline processes, right? So that everything is getting done in an efficient manner. So I was doing that and that became secondhand for me as a nurse. So when I decided to start my online business, I said, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Like, what am I already good at when I'm serving people? Where am I showing up at? And that was definitely in a role of systems, operations, and management in that aspect. So that's how I started as a system strategist and operations manager, just because it became, it became easy for me. And I was already doing it on the hospital side. Yeah, I love that. I love asking that question to all of the people that come on our show, because everyone has just such a different journey. Like, Some people are like, you know, I completely fell into this and I, you know, it was something that just stumbled, that I just stumbled upon. But then we have so many other entrepreneurs, kind of like myself also, that's like, and and like you, that were like, hey, like I have a skill. I, I, I know what that skill is. I'm really good at something. Now let me take my skill and find a way to create a business out of it and figure out ways that I can help people. So I love that you were like, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I want, you know, I know this works. I know I'm good at it. So I, I love that. So Let's talk about, let's, I love to be able to set the scene and and give everyone context so that we're on the same page and we know what we're talking about. So let's talk about what do we mean when we're talking about systems and operations? Like, let's start that foundation of like, when we think about our business, what do we, what do you mean when you say that you're like, you know, helping people to streamline their systems and operations? Yeah, that's a good question. So systems is basically think of it like the umbrella term. This is like the different departments in your business. What keeps things going? Operations, 
falls under that umbrella. So operations is just a, a component of your business, right? So we have our sales, we have our operations, we have our marketing, we have our you know customer service, whatever these different departments are, operations is a department that falls under the different systems of your business. So thinking of each department as a separate system that, you know, is this umbrella term. So the term is used, you know, different amongst different businesses, owners, <laughs> depending on who you're talking to. But I say to definitely think of it like an umbrella term and then operations is just a department that falls under it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for setting that context. Because I think, so like what she said was systems keep stuff going. <laughs> I love that you said systems keep stuff going. Um, and operations is a, part, is a department because I, I completely agree with that in a sense that like, you know, we have our marketing and, you know, as everybody know, who listens to the podcast knows marketing is my jam, of course. You know, that's what I love to talk about. I love to, 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 to talk about. But then you have like things like sales. But then you also have operations, like you mentioned, in a sense that like it helps to really figure out like how are we doing the things that we're doing? How do we make sure things keeps going? Who's, you know, who's responsible for doing what? What tools are we using to do different kinds of things? Um, and so I love that you gave us that context. So let's talk about why is it important for for us as next level CEOs to really make sure that we're not only like paying attention to our, our, our business operationally, but to really make sure that we are investing the time and the energy and the money to actually streamline what we're to streamline our systems and operations to help us to, um, to, to grow our businesses. Yeah. It's so funny. Cause I was just talking about this on my Facebook page that it's only so far you can go if you do not have your operations in place, right? Um, at the end of the day, the operations are helping us set the foundation for the type of business that we want. So if you're saying to yourself in your business, you are okay with putting 80 hours a week in, with doing a whole bunch of things manually and having your hand in all different types of plates, then, then you're fine. Operations, uh, streamlining operations is not for you. <laughs> but if you're saying that, hey, I want to have a successful business, but I don't want to be burnt out. I don't want to be stressed. I want things to be organized. I want them to run smoothly. I want my customers to be happy. Then that is an operations thing. That is saying that you want to have your processes in order so that everything runs smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. A couple of things that you said was that one, you can only go but so far without your operations really working. And I like I so agree with that because I will say that like in the taking the time in my business to really like systematize things and create templates and create um, SOPs, which are standard operating procedures on how we do things has literally been, I would even say a game changer, to be honest, because mm -hmm. now I'm in a place where I'm like, oh, we have a template for that. Or, oh, we have an SOP for that. I'll give you a, like a great example of one, like give the listeners a great example of one that really helped my business. So um, obviously, you know, we're listening to the podcast. The podcast actually has an SOP. That was the first, one of the first SOPs that we actually created um, because- we were, you know, we decided to launch the podcast late last year. We were thinking about it and we had, we had, we had done podcasts before. So I've had, you know, some of the listeners may know I have another podcast called High on Self-Care. That's all about cannabis and self-care and that kind of thing. And so that podcast, we literally, we had the experience of being able to figure out like, how do we get this podcast out weekly? How do we grow it to a certain place? And so when we decided to launch our marketing podcast, the first, one of the first things I did was like, we need to create an SOP for this mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because I I've realized that with our other podcasts, we did not have SOPs and it's not that, you know, a whole lot of things were missed. It's, it's just that, you know, it feels like sometimes we were jumping around. Things weren't always going in the right order. Um, you know, I felt more stressed because I was like, okay, where does my part pick? Where, where does my part start? And where does my part end? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I pass this off to someone? Because that's really was, you know, the, the, the goal with creating these systems and operations for me, at least or the goal for my business is not to have everything revolve around me. Like, you know, with the podcast, 
at the top of that SOP is me concepting the podcast, me figuring out, you know, planning the content and all that kind of stuff. But then I also have to record. Then I have to say like, where do I put my recording? You know, like mm-hmm. in that announcement says like, okay, where do we put the recording? Where does my assistant actually find the recording? Like where, you know, where do I put the titles and the, and, and all the stuff that goes into a podcast. And you don't realize how many little details go into getting something out until you actually document it. And I'll say yeah. like documenting that SOP, like a, you know, top to bottom, like from, we I mean, from like concepting all the way through publishing, all the way through marketing, that is how we're able to say like, you know what, this podcast goes out every week. It goes out on the same schedule. All the things are getting done. And it's not like, you know, it's a perfect SLP, right? We do update it over time. But I will say like, if I had to bring someone else on my team, if I had to like, you know, something where like, you know, my, my assistant were out and she couldn't edit the podcast or something like that, I have a document that tells me exactly what to do. So it's yeah. super helpful. Yeah. And that's, that's so important because when you have a team, like the SOPs is the communication for everybody. So imagine bringing a team member on and you had no type of training, you had no type of way of telling them, this is how we do business. Again, that's a breakdown in the communication and it's a breakdown in the way you're going to operate. Even having documents that even talk about what you do <laughs> and who you are for those new team members, because sometimes you realize that people come on board and, you know, they have an idea of what you do, right? But they don't realize what you're, you know, what you actually do or what the mechanics are of actually getting things out. And so I love that you mentioned that, you know, it's the communication between the team. And so, yeah. so, so important. No matter how far along you are on your entrepreneurial journey, there are moments when you may feel isolated, stressed, or grapple with imposter syndrome. Trust me, you are not alone, and hearing stories from other founders that have overcome the same challenges as you can make a big difference. Comcast NBC Universal's Lift Labs offers you that perspective by giving a platform to Black and Latino founders navigating the startup world and life's everyday challenges in season two of Founding in Color. This three-part docu-series lets you hear directly from underrepresented founders. As local sports network founder Dustin McMahon puts it, every time my company reaches a new milestone, I get further and further away from people who look like me. Each episode of Founding in Color offers up gems from startup founders like Chris Witherspoon of Pop Viewers and Folase Ugumokin of Unscripted TV that'll inspire you to take action. Whether your business is an idea or you're pitching a VC for funding to get to the next level, this is a must-watch series. You can watch all three episodes of Funding in Color Season 2 right now on Peacock. What are some of the challenges that CEOs um, are experiencing when before they come to you that are kind of giving them um, an indication that something with their systems or their operations is off. Like, what are some of those challenges that, that we can kind of look out for to see, like, what's going on in my business and how do I know that right now is the time to really kind of start to think about systems and operations? Yeah. So oftentimes they're having this the juggling act, right? <laughs> that is what I see all the time. They're like, I'm doing everything. I don't even know where to begin. If I did want to delegate something or automate something or streamline the process, I don't even know where to begin. So the first part, the first part is that they're just overwhelmed. That's what I see a lot. They're at a place where They know that they need to change. They just don't know where to even begin with that. And when I get those type of clients, it's kind of looking like, hey, let's put things into three buckets. Again, what can you, only you as the CEO do in your business? What can you delegate? What can you safely delegate? You feel comfortable enough delegating. And then what can be automated? What are the repetitive tasks that we can allow technology to take over for us? Once we find out those three buckets, usually that's auto, that right there is already taken off a huge chunk off their plate. Some people are realizing that they do need to start hiring people. They've been working as solopreneurs and they, maybe they made their first six figures alone, but it caused them a headache and a lot of stress. <laughs> so now they're like, hey, I need to start adding some team members, but it's just not, hey, let me just go pick whoever's out there asking for a job. You got to have a strategy on what team member you actually need, who your first hire should actually be. And sometimes it's not always a VA. Like we instantly run to go to a VA, but if your business is chaotic and you bring on a VA, then you really is not, you're not really going to be able to delegate property. So properly. So sometimes I tell people, get your business in order now, figure out your operation, streamline it, and then add on your additional contractors or team members that you want to have. 
Yeah, that's such great advice because it's like if you're bringing someone in as the virtual assistant to some chaos, it's like, what can they realistically do, right? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> you know, it's really kind of difficult to like, because especially like me, like I like I remember, you know, when I first started working with my assistant, and it's like you want to give them stuff to do, but then it's like I need to figure out, I can't like I need it done a certain way, I, and it because it's not documented, I can't just easily hand things off. Like for example, one tool that I use all the time is Loom, and yeah. Loom is a great tool for being able to just like screen record what you're doing. And if I want an email to go out, like for for my for how we send our emails out, I created a Loom that's just like this is how I want the emails to be sent out. This is the this is the template that we use for these kinds of emails. This is you know what I put in the description box. This is you know where you find the subject lines like all that kind of stuff is really important to just be able to say like if you are bringing on team members you do you do want to bring on a VA or even like you know you want to bring on other people in your team um especially like if you're thinking about marketing like there's something like you know things I work with my fractional CMO clients on are definitely marketing operations it's like how do we make sure that everything's getting into the project management system how do we make sure that we know who gets assigned what how do we make sure that um you know if we want something to go out recurring, like we want a newsletter to go out monthly or weekly, what does that look like? You know, where, you know, who has to, where does the content come from? Where does it live? All this kind of stuff is important for when you're, as you're building out your marketing, you're building out your team in general, but building out that marketing team. And, and I love how you talked about some buckets, like the three buckets, like what are the things that only you, the CEO can do? What are things that you can delegate and what are things that you can automate? And let me tell you, automating is probably one of my favorite parts yeah. of systems <laughs> and operations. So let's talk about automation for a little bit. Like where do we start? I mean, well, we, we you've kind of given us the context of starting of figuring out like, what are our three buckets? Like when we, when we, where do we start when we're, when we're like, okay, we have some things in the automation bucket, or I'm like, okay, there are some things in my business that I can automate. Where, how do we get started with that um, and, and, and being able to, you know, maximize what we're doing and still kind of maintain that, still maintain business as usual, right? Like, you know, not having to worry about automated tasks falling through the cracks. Where, where do we kind of get started with that? Yeah. So when you're doing that breakdown of those three buckets, and let's say that third bucket is when you're trying to figure out what's automated, you're listing repetitive tasks. So for example, um, I had a client who was sending all of her contracts manually, right? That's a repetitive task. That is not anything that needs her level of expertise as the CEO. So that is something that we can automate and that can be done easily by using like a CRM, you know, a client relationship management tool. So it's once you figure out those tasks, this is something that I'm doing all the time for every client or um, all the time in my business processes, right? Then you determine what's the technology. Do not go backwards to saying, oh, I found this nice tool. I heard about this new thing online. Let me figure out which one of my tasks fall into that. No, we're going to go task to technology and not the other way around. So that that's, that's that order that you take. You figure out your tasks, what are repetitive, and then you figure out if there's a system tool, a piece of technology that can help you automate it. Yes, I lo I love that. I love tasks to technology. We're gonna have to like trademark that or something. Because <laughs> yes. So like because it's such a reframe, right? Like because we 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 as CEOs, as business owners, you know, we try to find the tool and then we try to figure out how to make our business fit within the tool. But really where we got to start is like, I need the, the tool to fit my business, right? Yes. Like I yes. need to make sure that, you know, I document my systems before I even figure out what tool I'm going to need, because there might be a tool that does certain things. Like, and I'll give you an example that we literally recently just went through this of with social media management tools, because we have used over these last couple of years, I would say like two or three different social media, uh, social media scheduling tools. And we recently just switched um, from Buffer to um, one app. And if you want, I'll make sure I'll, I'll link one app in the, um, in the show notes, if you want to check it out. But the reason we switched is because we got on, like we got on Buffer because, you know, Buffer is a, it's a great tool, not knocking Buffer. It's a great tool. But then when we started to realize what, how we were using it and how, what we were using it for, it wasn't meeting where us knew where we needed to be. We needed mm -hmm. certain features that Buffer just either didn't have available or we had to rely on manual things. And so we decided, so we made a list of like, okay, what do we actually need the social media tool to do? And then once we did that, then my assistant was able to go and kind of find some different options. We weighed our options and then we picked our tool and we, you know, did our trial. And now we're, we're loving, I'm literally loving this new tool that we're using um, because it's not perfect, but it definitely gets us from, you know, most of the way from where we were at before. It gets us to where we're like 90 
80% being able to automate our social media posting. Um, but before, whereas Buffer had us at about 50%, right? And so yeah. even just making these incremental changes, I would say, and that change, like literally being able to make that change came from us taking a step back instead of saying, let's look at a bunch of tools and see what their features are. It took us to stop and say, what do we need to use it for? What profiles do we actually use? Like, you know, if the tool integrates with YouTube, I don't post on YouTube that much. So I really don't, you know, if that's a big feature of the tool, I don't really need the YouTube feature, right? And mm -hmm. so as a CEO, when you're thinking about, you know, your systems and operations, I love what you said, like tasks to technology, like think of the tasks first and then figure out, you know, what technology you need to support that. Yeah, and then that makes me think of another point. When, like you said, when you're selecting the technology, do your due diligence, your research to figure out if it's actually something that you need. Again, we're getting referrals, you know, from people about what works for them in their business, but that may not be what works for you in your business. So maybe you do need this big, robust, you know, CRM, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just need something that can automate a few tasks here and there. So just you got to do your due diligence figuring out what it is that you need for your business. Yeah, that's such a great point because like, and, I, and it makes me think of another example as well um, for us, because I mentioned like, you know, in the, the top of the show, Q1 for us is all systems and operations. So we've been living in systems and operations land this last couple of months. Um, and we just switched our, pri our, our our project management system from Trello to Asana. And mm -hmm. I was debating between Asana and ClickUp. Um, and the reason I chose Asana was because ClickUp was too robust for us. Like we didn't yes. need all of that stuff, you know, like yes. we, we didn't need, you know, to be able to take all that time to set up, set it up most efficiently. But I'll say like, you know, I have a client, for example, we're onboarding on ClickUp and we have a, you know, we're, we're working on that piece of it. And it's because they had, they needed a more robust tool, right? They needed that, that big tool that with all the moving pieces. And so like, I love what you were saying that sometimes it's not just about, you know, saying like, this is the best tool on the market or the most popular tool or the tool that everybody recommends. It's really about figuring out like, what do I need? What is the capacity? What, you know, what kind of projects and how much automation and what kind of movement do I really need for my business? Um, and then I can figure out the tool that, that best supports that. And so, how do we know now we've, now we've talked about, so we've talked about, you know, our systems and operations, what that is. We've talked about some challenges and understanding that like, if you're at a place where you're in a juggling act, if you're overwhelmed, if you really don't know where to start, where you, you know, what, what to automate, you're not really a tech savvy kind of person. All these kinds of things are kind of, um, you know, giving you some signals that you need to, you know, work with someone to help you with your systems and operations. So how do we know, how does the CEO know that it's time to hire a system strategist or an online business manager? Because we talked a little bit about before, um, about maybe a virtual assistant is not actually what you need. Um, so how, and I will say, honestly, my virtual assistant acts more like an online business manager than she does a virtual <laughs> assistant, to be honest, because uh, she has her hands in so many different things. Um, and so how do we know when it's time, let's, for, let's talk about, you know, hiring someone who's more like an online business manager slash system strategist versus hiring an actual virtual assistant. And how do we know whether, you know, which way we need to go based, you know, operationally based on in our business? Yeah. So again, if you're at that place where you do not even know where to begin, or you know that you need systems, but you do not want to invest the time needed to learn everything, put it all together yourself. That is when you can hire a system strategist or an operation manager. For me, I do it as a dual position. There are some people who are just system strategists, right? They do different system setups. And then there are others who are just operations manager. They will come in and either oversee your day-to-day -day operations, or they'll come in and give you a strategy. For me, I'm doing the best of both, right? I'm providing you the technology aspect of it, but the strategy aspect of having an operations manager. So if, again, if you need somebody to help set up everything, do it for you, then again, you're going to get somebody like me. If you want somebody who could just do the strategy component, you're like, hey, give me the strategy and I'll hire the team members to do it. I'll keep them on long term. Then you're probably looking for an operations consultant. Somebody can come in, give you the strategy, give you the tools that you need, and then you can have your team set it up and implement it. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what, what you need. Do you need somebody who just give you the strategy or do you want like the done for you set up where just come in and do everything? Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great perspective um, <clears throat> because I even like, you know, for me in our business, like, you know, we 
are more so in a place where I'm like, we have, we can, we're me and my assistant are both very tech savvy and we can implement and we can build tools and we can do all those mm -hmm. things. But it's the strategy where I find that I have a blind spot because I'll just be like, okay, I, cause like, like I mentioned with the buffer example, it's like, you know, we didn't switch until we realized that we were having a problem. <laughs> like we was, I was in the middle of a launch and I'm realizing like, I'm having to manually post stuff. My assistant is manually posting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is just crazy. <laughs> like, you know, and so I had that blind spot to realizing like, okay, what are the things that actually make your business run day to day? And social media is a big one for us. And we, we're posting on social a lot, especially when we're in a launch. And so trying to fiddle with the tool in the launch is not the yeah. best time for us to be, you know, you know, to be stuck because we're, we're, we're in go mode. And so it's so important, I think really to even have someone, if you're at a place where you're unsure of um where to start to just talk to somebody to talk to someone who is who's who's in that place of like I don't have that blind spot blind spot to systems and strategies because this is what I do and so tell us a little bit more about how you work with your clients like what does that look like when someone is like hey you know I know that my systems and operations are a little jacked up what do, and I want to work with you what do they what do they do next how does that work <laughs> Yeah. So, um, for 2023, that has, that's going to look a little different. So I'll talk about old me and new me. <laughs> so all me was doing a little bit of system setups and silos. So for example, they'll say, Hey, I want my dub silo set up. Can you help me set up the dub silo? So I'll do the dub silo or I need my sauna streamline. Can you do the sauna? Now it's going to be a more holistic look at the business, right? So I'm either going to be with you as an operations manager on retainer, and that is someone who can oversee your day-to-day -day operations, kind of like your right-hand man, your wing man, who's going to help you with all of your strategy, technology, um, overseeing your teams. That is what that operations manager does. Or you can use me in the consultant form where I'll create your strategy, create a roadmap for you and provide you all the tools that you need in order for you and your team to be able to manage your operations. So those are going to be the two services that I'm doing, you know, this year moving forward. Yeah, I love that. I love that you have, you know, a holistic approach and you have a roadmap because, you know, we love a roadmap here on Roadmap to One Million. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like sometimes, so it's really about, I think, you know, assessing where you're at. And I promise, you know, if you take the time as a CEO speaking from experience, right? Like it's that if you take it, like, I understand that sometimes it's hard to stop and figure out like, okay, what is the process? How are we doing these things? It's hard to sometimes stop and document something to be like, Ooh, I can do it a lot faster. I can just jump in and do this thing, you know, but really if you're thinking long-term for your business, and one of the things I love to talk about with CEOs and, 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 and figuring out ways to impart it in my business is finding ways to work less, but still have a big impact, right? That's why yeah. I love ads. That's why I'm always talking about these, you know, these kinds of things where we can figure out like, what are the things that we can do that don't require a whole lot of our effort and energy and time, at least, you know, over time, like with our systems and operations, I'll say, you know, it definitely requires time, that time up front. Like I'll say last year we use, so we use HoneyBook as our, um, as our CRM system and our, to send out our automated contracts and invoices and those kinds of things. And, and I'll also link, link, um, link our code to, to HoneyBook as well, if you're looking for a system like that, but we took the time in, in it, it was stressful. <laughs> it was like us trying to set these up, to put this together, do all these things, all these moving pieces. We had, you know, we were, and we also had that blind spot to strategy. So we were, we were really only focusing on setting it up for like what we had an immediate top of mind need for. But I will say that taking that quarter to really get that process set up, like our client on onboarding system is on point, right? Like I haven't really had to touch it, <laughs> you know, since we set it up. Because now it's like, okay, I always send out proposals. So my templates are in there. Okay, my my, my contracts are in there. My invoices, I have so many things set up in a, you know, in a more like streamlined way so that all I have to do is log in, update some information, you know, give some, you know, put some little personal touches on there. But even to the point where like having the email template that goes out, that's like, hey, here's your proposal. Here's, you know, some like all of that stuff, like taking the time to really set it up is really, you know, and in, 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 while you're in it, it feels hard and it feels difficult. But when you get past it, you realize how much smoother your business is running. And you realize, like, like I said, I haven't had to really touch my client onboarding system, at least the operation, like the mechanics of it 
in in a year, you know, we'll update some information here, change out, you change out a couple of things there, here and there. But structurally, like people have gone through the same exact process over and over and over again that we, you know, set up in the beginning of the year. So I love, you know, what you were saying about how you have the holistic approach or you have that roadmap, because I think that that's super beneficial for 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 all of our business owners that are listening for sure. <clears throat> So before we wrap, before we get out of here, because we've given everybody such great information, I think that y'all, I'm like, I'm, I'm telling y'all, literally, literally reach out and get somebody to help you with your operations, y'all, because it is something that I will say that like, it's, it's something I will always do every quarter, like every first quarter of the year, we're blocking this off. And it's not to say that we don't have to touch our operations through the rest of the year, but for the most part, this is when we're really focused on it. And so then, you know, next quarter we can tighten some things up, tweak some things where we're not building tools from this ground up like we did this quarter, like this quarter with Asana. So tell us about how, um, if they, if the listeners out there want to learn from you, if they want to connect with you, have any, any resources or anything for, for those of us who want to take a deeper dive into this, talk to us about how we can connect with you, um, how we can connect with you on the systems and operations side. Yeah. So you can follow me over on my website. You can check me out there at bcrownvips.com. I am also over on Instagram at bcrownvips as well. And then for your listeners, I am going to make sure that they have access to the Streamline Their Systems uh, workbook so that they can have step-by-step the processes that they need and kind of figure out, hey, this is a time for me to kind of revamp my systems, revamp it. So the workbook is going to really help with that. So the workbook and then the masterclass, I cannot forget the masterclass. So if you are hearing this before March 22nd, (laughs) I would love for you to join me at my masterclass. We're going to talk about how to streamline your success It's going to be a focus on the customer journey, but I'm going to do a deep dive into operations, systems, and automations because at the end of the day, working with our customers, we want to make sure that they have a good experience, but also we want to make sure that when we're offering our services, again, we're not getting burnt out doing it. So they tie in hand in hand. So if you want to register for that masterclass, you can do that at streamlineyoursystems.net. I love that. So that was y'all. We got this streamline their streamline their systems workbook. Let me tell you, I'm about to go grab this workbook, workbook, y'all, because I'm like, I love to like when someone is like, this is what you need to do. Like, give me the steps. That's like, okay, these are the high level things. And then, you know, really just like jumping into that masterclass. And y'all know, I talk about the customer journey a lot, especially if you are someone who is looking to run Facebook ads or anything like that your customer journey needs to be on point, right? Like you need to make sure that regardless of how many people you're getting into your funnel, you really have a streamlined way of moving them from prospect to sale. Uh, And that includes your delivery, right? This including making sure that people can actually sign up for the course that you sold, right? It makes sure that, you know, people can actually get the resources that they need to get, you know? All of that kind of stuff is so important. So I'm super, super, super excited for your masterclass. So the masterclass is on March 22nd, y'all. It's in the evening. So if you're listening to this on the morning of the 22nd, then you definitely want to make sure you head over to streamlineyoursystems.net. It was streamlineyoursystems.net, right? Yes. Yeah, streamlineyoursystems.net. And we will make sure that all of the links that we talked about today, and including um, including her links and all the, and links to site and links to social and all that kind of good stuff are in the show notes. And y'all, our show notes are now posted on our blog. I'm super excited because our blog, because we just moved, speaking of another systems upgrade, we moved to WordPress this quarter as well because it was going to be better for our process. We we put, we want to post a lot of blog content. The other platforms that we were on were not good for that. And so we were like, you know, system wise, operationally, WordPress is going to be a better system for us yeah. to use. And so we took the time this the, this quarter to really like focus on moving that stuff over. So make sure y'all head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast and you'll see all of the podcasts there. You'll see the show notes. Make sure you head down to the links um, below in the show notes and we'll we'll make sure we link to all to the masterclass as well as the workbook. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Lanisha. I have such had such a great time. We had such a great conversation. Anything that you want to leave the people with before we close out? Yes. So just reminding you, set the stage now for your business. However you want your business to look in the future, you start setting the stage for that now. So make a priority of your operations, your systems, your operations, because that is what's going to give you the business that gives you the freedom that you deserve. Yes, I love that. Come out and mic drop, set the stage now. Let me tell you, I plan on being on a beach for most of my life. 
and I cannot be drilled down by having to send out manual contracts and all these kinds right. of things, okay? <laughs> so thank you so much. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and close out this episode. Make sure y'all follow in the show. Make sure y'all share this with a friend. Share this with your biz bestie that you know needs to definitely upgrade their operations because it's something that is an ongoing thing. Like I said, I do this, you know, I try to focus on operations more and more every year. And so it's something that's super, super important. So thanks y'all. We will see y'all next week on the Roadmap to 1 Million podcast. I'll talk to y'all later. Thank you so much for listening to the Roadmap to 1 Million podcast. I just know you got a nugget or two from that episode that will take your brand to the next level if you take action. Keyword, take action action. So head over to stacyzeal.co slash checklist to get a free resource that will help you to take action on what you learned today so that you can get on to building the brand of your dreams. And be sure to leave us a review so businesses like yours can get this gold as well. All right, y'all. I'll see you on the next episode.